Hi, uh, Derek here with a walkthrough of how the app sheet in Vertex AI ticketing dashboard app is made. I kept the app pretty simple, but there are a few features that I think are worth calling out. So uh, first I'll just point out the data structure. Uh, we have tickets and messages. So one ticket has many messages. The messages are the emails themselves. The um, prompts, uh, when we create a prompt using Vertex AI, uh, we're creating a record in this, and then when we save that in uh, app sheet, is uh, creating a message based off of the inputs from this table. Uh, one thing I'll call out here, you, you might notice when you click around in this dashboard, uh, this is not an interactive view. Uh, the problem I was having is if I deselect all open tickets, then I just got a list of all of the messages and it was kind of confusing for the user. So the way I implement this is uh, in the user table, I keep a column for the active ticket and active message that the user is viewing. And these are each row is you know, specific to the logged in user. And so uh, when I uh, click on a row in here, let's take open tickets, for example, it's going to trigger this action or call set active ticket. And so from the tickets table, we have this call set active ticket. And it's going to look at the logged in user and call the set active ticket on that particular user and it's passing this active ticket value. Um, the way that I got this to show up is I'm using the input function. So let's go look at this set active ticket. That's over here. Uh, so you'll see this set active ticket, the value that I'm sending it to is equal to input uh, active ticket and then you know, I just have this placeholder blank value there. Uh, so you can use that input in order to pass values. Uh, it's, it's in beta, so uh, just be aware of that. And uh, then I do the same thing with message, so it's the exact same pattern. And as a result, I've got this dashboard that allows uh, the person to select a, a ticket, see the details here. The dashboard's interactive, but it's not technically using the interactive mode. So I was able to get rid of that unwanted behavior on the list of related messages. The next thing I'll call out are the automations. So how did we monitor the inbox? Uh, the inbox is got this, th this is uh, the inbox monitoring is happening using app script. Uh, this is really independent of app sheet. I've got this function called monitor inbox and uh, it is, uh, it's deployed on the inbox of the account that owns this project. Uh, so this project, this uh, app script project is owned by the same account that owns the, um, the app sheet app as well. And the way, when I say deployed, what I mean is there's uh, uh, this trigger. The trigger is based on time. Let's see if we can, here, let's look at the details. So it'll call this monitor inbox function. It's time driven and it does it every minute. So every minute it, it checks for uh, it checks for any unread messages. Uh, that's what this part's doing. Uh, then it'll extract the detail from those messages. And then it sends that information to AppSheet via a post using the AppSheet API. And the benefit of that is that this is actually posting uh, to the messages table. And you'll see the, the details for my AppSheet uh, API are all listed here. And the benefit of doing it by the AppSheet API is that then over here on the AppSheet side, I have this automation and this is create ticket number. So when a new message record is created, it's triggering this and it's gonna check for an existing ticket. Uh, if, if one exists, then it will uh, set the ticket ID and for, for that message. And if one doesn't, then it'll create it. And so that's how if somebody responds uh, back to an email, it'll just, uh, re-flag that existing ticket as action required. So that's our monitoring the inbox. And the next thing, while we're on the app script, the next thing I'll call out, um, I kind of skipped over this, but there's a constants file. This is where all the inputs are for, um, for the service account that connects to the Vertex AI model and for the app sheet application uh, where for, for the app sheet app, so for the, the access key and the app ID. The vertex AI code is here, and uh, in the instructions, I've, I've 
you can you can grab all this code so you, you can copy it over to your account and, and edit it uh, the main things to call out here is um, uh, let's actually go back to app sheet first so there is a automation uh, under prompts and when the user clicks the uh, let's open one of the messages and does a prompt response it opens up this form and when they save that form it's triggering this uh, this automation. It's creating a row in the prompts table and that calls this app, uh, app script function, calls it a call text AI function and it passes it the prompt which is a concatenation of the prompt that the user provided and the message that it's relative to. So app script receives that in this call text AI function and first it's going to use this get GCP service to uh, create an auth token. So let's look at that. Uh, this is using the OAuth2 library here. Uh, if you want to find this, this is a, a Google official GitHub repo. Just search for OAuth2 library app script. And the, uh, that's what's getting the authentication token. Uh, then we create the request for the Vertex AI API and we pass it the, the prompt that we got. And right now the parameters are just hard coded, but if you want to fiddle with those two, you could put that into app sheet and allow the user to adjust those if you wanted. Uh, the code has additional, uh, has additional lines for, if you want to use chat bison, uh, I'm using text bison. So this text bison is for usually a, a single question and response, whereas chat bison uh, can use context. Uh, this could actually be a cool thing to do to pass the context of an existing thread and the specific message is the new information and you could get more relevant results. Uh, so that's the Vertex AI piece. Last thing I'll show here is the respond to thread. So uh, in AppSheet again, there's the send message automation. And when you uh, submit a new message, uh, then it's going to trigger this. Um, it's got a condition, so it's only going to do this if the status is set to pending send. And it's going to trigger app script, and it'll just pass it, uh, you know, all the information that's going to go back in the email. And then app script uses this to uh, find that uh, email by thread ID, and then just put a response out. So those are the automations. Uh, let's take a look at resources. So in the app, discard this, here's the knowledge bank. Uh, this is another kind of interesting design pattern. So uh, the filters that the user selects here, uh, those get applied to the user table again. So I've got first those, each of those toggle switches, and then if the user puts in text or requests this particular type of media, or type or owner, that all gets saved here. And then that gets applied to a slice. So this table here, uh, let's edit this one. This search criteria, you'll see this is based on the current user. And the current user is a slice that just returns the, the one row of the user table for the logged in user. And then this re uh, resource results, let's look at that. That is based on the filtered results and filtered results is a slice on the sources table, and here's the filter condition. It's a little gnarly, but not too bad. So if the toggle switch is off, then it'll bypass you know, the, the, rel the related element of the filter. Otherwise, if it's on, then it's going to only show results where the title contains the value that the user enters. Likewise, it's only going to show results if the uh, value in the media column equals what the user has selected here. Uh, so it's that combination of a user table and a slice that reads the inputs that are stored in that user's table that creates that knowledge bank uh, search behavior. Last thing I'll call out is this uh, service level objective tracking. Uh, this is coming from a virtual column. So on the tickets table, I have this SLO, and this is another kind of gnarly formula, uh, but this is saying if the value is action required, meaning it's a message that needs to be responded to, 
then it's going to uh, check if the uh, if the message is greater than five days old, that's the five times 24 here, uh, then it's going to show that the, oh, oh and it, it equals exactly negative one, then it'll show that the service level objective is one day overdue, it's got one day left. Uh, this is These specific cases are just to manage the plural version of the word days. And otherwise, if it's greater than one, then it'll either um, do you know, SLO X days overdue, otherwise it's SLO X days left. And if it's waiting, uh, or if it's closed, then it's got these other uh, versions that it'll display. And so these are all in the waiting category. So you'll see it's the last message sent uh, um, format of, of that SLO label. And then uh, that allows you in this deck view to just select the SLO column as, as your uh, as your input for, for that component of the view. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope that helps kind of give you an, a, lay, a lay of the land for this particular application. Uh, happy app building.